it seemed like if we really were gonna make it the ultimate austin powers movie, there had to be some new big character that he played. and the one that hooked us was this guy, goldmember. another dastardly enemy. it's very funny, every every time he takes his trousers off, the room lights up. goldmember is this disgusting <laughs> guy with this crazy hair. It's a little frightening. I mean, it maybe have gone too far, but it's just, you know, a character that's so out there, you can't believe he's actually going for it. Yes, yes, yes. The origins of Goldmember were mostly, as they always are, Mike coming up with a funny character that he just plays in the bathtub and his wife cracks up. Goldmember is my observations of a certain type of European swinger. They usually wear like a Speedo pickle suit, banana hammock, and these little male purses. I'm from Holland, everyone. Isn't that weird? <laughs> I want you all to have an Amsterdam good time. He has this crazy accent. It occurred to me that the entire Dutch people have a national speech impediment, which is they shush like this. Yes, 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 but gold is very sexy. Yes, yes, they talk like this with the yes, the Dutch, the thing like that. I thought that that was kind of fascinating, and that's really the window in, was just that all of Holland has a speech impediment. Why the Dutch have been singled out this time around? You can't be prejudiced against the Dutch. Dutch hater. He's a character that's from the post-sexual liberation where people actually could just have fun in such an uninhibited, crazy way that a mythology could come out of sexuality. I saw a thing on HBO called Real Sex. This Dutch guy had a sex farm between Amsterdam and Rotterdam. The opening line was, for 400 years, this barn was used for the cow, shh. And now it's for the couple, shh. And he has a three-quarter replica of Rotterdam that is these various sex rooms. Here we are in the Chinese sex swing. It's a little squeaky. I have to put on the oil. He's not in great shape, and none of the people that go there are. They're the first people to take off their swimming trunks on a nudist beach in St. Bart's. They kind of dare you to sort of go, hey, buddy, I can see your wiener. And they're sort of like, yes, of course you can see my wiener. I am European, and you are an uptight North American. And I am an uptight North American, and I'm probably not going to go and show my wiener on the beach. I'm probably not going to. The first step was really just hearing him read it, which was just hilarious. Oh, you know, you should never show your wiener. The next step really was the hair and the makeup. The kind of look is by subtraction. Dr. Evil's bald. Austin Powers, he was a full head of hair. Fat Bastard has red hair. Okay, so what's left? Blonde and thinning. So we went plucks. It gave him green eyes because all the other characters have blue or brown. We found these roller derby shorts, which were not too unlike Raquel Welsh in Kansas City Bombers. And I kind of knew that those satin shorts had to be on gold member. Gold leather overalls was really inspired by Elton John. We also had to have the velour tracksuit because every 1975 roller disco club owner would have to have a velour tracksuit. Oh, yes, 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 this is a keeper. Oh. He's just weird, he's gross. Yep, you're gross. The peeling skin was an idea by Greg Taylor. That's not going in your mouth, is it? I just said, what if he's peeling? What if you could peel it off? And what if he eats it? <laughs> I, I said, you're a man after me own heart. One of the best things about going to the 70s was discovering Foxy Cleopatra. In my wildest dreams would I ever think that I would work with those wonderful, talented people. And then see it come up as you know. I had no idea I would one day be a part of Austin Powers 3. <laughs> I mean, that's huge. Beyonce Knowles is the real deal. This woman is a movie star, and nobody knows that yet, and that's so exciting. She is maybe the most likable on-screen presence right out of the gate I've seen in years. And she brought amazing energy to this film. She understands soul cinema, mostly through her mom, who is a soul cinema aficionado. It was just a huge honor when I got called for the auditions. She just totally got it. Beyonce went out and got the movies and looked at them, and she just nailed it. 
It's me, Foxy. Foxy Cleopatra, long time no see. She absolutely had the energy of it and the sassiness of it and good humor and warmth. And she was sexy and funny. I mean, we decided that to cast her that day. And she was such a total pleasure. Foxy is very forceful. She's very strong. Oh, tough street cop kind of agent. She's very determined. Let me hear you say yeah! Pam Greer in Foxy Brown. She played a big part in me preparing for this role. And she just was sexy and sassy and <laughs> shut up and turn around, Blinky. She's confident. Uh... She had it. So I, I've tried to give that same funk and stink. And, and Foxy Cleopatra. You got a lot of nerve dragging your job white ass in here. And when she's serious and she wants something, she'll tell you off. We did a lot of research. We watched old movies. Especially the soul cinema films. All those really amazing, textured, fun films from that time. We looked at all of them and we chose the ones that we really liked. And so she has about five different looks in the movie. Foxy wears the hottest outfits I've seen in a long time. I've always admired the clothes that my mom wore in the 70s. The afros, the afro puffs, the boots, the fabrics, the choice of colors, the leather mixed with the scarves, the hats, the jewelry, all of it was just so colorful and had so much character. Dina did such an incredible job. We invented this fox symbol that we made into earrings and a necklace pendant and a great brass belt that said Foxy, and they just really made every outfit come to life, and it really gave it the 70s edge. I walked in, and it was the 70s. It was incredible. We had all these lashes and glitter, and she has different lashes every time you see her with lots of eyeliner. It's kind of like a cross between Mary Quant and Twiggy. Being able to wear an afro is definitely hot. I'm in the 70s now, I might be able to rock it after the movie is over, so I'm happy. Maybe we'll bring the authentic afro back. Talk about heaven on earth. This girl walked in, beautiful, learned the dance number in five minutes flat, and she was flawless, and never made a mistake. Beyonce is a musical sensation. She can sing and dance, and she's so beautiful, and she writes all her own songs and produces them. She is phenomenal. She is. Electric. She's hilarious. She can sing, dance, do drama. She has some really sweet emotional scenes in our film, but she's really funny. My favorite thing about Beyonce Knowles is how incredibly easy she is to make laugh. <laughs> My goal in every scene was to just have her laugh. And towards the end of the movie, it got increasingly harder to make her laugh. <laughs> you always knew how to make me yes, smile. <laughs> Which meant that when I actually did get her, it was really, really satisfying. Aren't you going to introduce us, Austin? Foxy, this is my Powers, Nigel Powers. Nigel is definitely Austin's father. No, no. You could absolutely see that Austin is a chip off of that block. They have arguments all the time. You don't don't blink when you shoot. I don't uh, blink yeah. when I bloody shoot. He has that same mojo that uh, Austin has. Is that over the floor? His father's hornier than he is. Kind of a pain in the ass. Ow! I mean, this is no wonder Austin is as shagadelic as he is. Austin Powers has a lot of genetic material. There's James Bond, there's James Coburn, there's Dean Martin. Michael Caine is the other part of that. We had studied a lot of Michael Caine's movies in creating the first Austin Powers. Partly the glasses was inspired by the Harry Palmer movies. It's kind of a nerd cool look. You see it a lot in British culture as well. I mean, when I first saw him and it said he was a spy and I saw the glasses, I thought of me and Ipcrest file. And of course, it turned out to be what it was. Michael Caine was always part of the heritage of the film anyway, so it was just like suddenly so perfect for Michael Caine to be Austin's father. I was actually the first one to call him and say, you know, we really think you'd be great for this. And he said, sure, I can wear the teeth, right? I can wear the glasses, don't you think? I mean, he was so on it. He said, well, I'm going to wear a wig, aren't I? <laughs> it is a bit of a spin-off of Austin, but reverse engineered. I copied as many things as possible of Austin based on the fact that Austin would have copied them 
from me. I have an idea. They really acted like father and son. It was really weird. Cocaine reminds me a great deal of my own father. Oh, um, it's a good time to be. We instantly started finishing each other's sentences. Your spy car's a mini. It's not the size of my friend. It's how you use it. Originally, we were going to have Mike play young, evil, and young Austin because we thought, oh, who could we possibly find that could make that as funny as Mike Myers does? I got called in to uh, read for either Austin Powers or Dr. Evil. I actually got the DVD so I could go back and forth and watch it over and over again. I've had to quickly watch the movie a lot. When Aaron first came in and did Austin Powers, that taught us that it could be done. Excellent. Well done. They're so funny that everybody's always imitating them. Aaron came in and started doing these Austinisms and had not just the lines, but all of the mannerisms and all of the way he adjusted his glasses. And, and we said, that's the kid. It's the only thing I'm nervous about is me, Mike Myers, I guess. It was really strange. I didn't recognize him at first because I'm, I'm a little nearsighted. And I saw him, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's Mike Myers. And I like stood up. My heart skipped a beat. <laughs> I was a sexy beast. <laughs> and he did some impressions for us. You know, yeah, some it of his was stuff really was great crazy. to see him in real life. I'm still doing okay. <laughs> we were skeptical. We weren't sure this whole concept would even work. It took weeks and weeks to, to convince ourselves that this was the way to go. We liked you guys so much, we'd just like to offer you the part. Both of you, each of you, and uh, you're in. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm talking so. about it. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's going to be very cool. Great work, guys. Thanks. You guys got that in film, didn't you? It was funny because you guys got the me getting the part on tape, so I didn't get to, you know, <laughs> scream and jump up and just, oh, that's great. Yeah. Yes. There. This is the uh, Austin Power chest hair from Austin Powers 2. Workout. That one's a little big. Ah, uh, Will these fit him? Thanks, dude. No, it, all right, there it is. Harry. A little bit more in? Yeah. It's fairly warm. Ah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's very warm. We're doing dental costs. Looks very appetizing. He said, I really want to go through this again. It's the most fun stuff I've ever had with gooey rubbish in my mouth. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that is one beautiful dental cast. Does that feel okay? Oh, I can hear. <laughs> I don't think I was really called the best Austin impersonator. I guess I was okay at it, but uh, then I never really watched the films hundreds of times to you know, get the impression down. I practice in front of the mirror, kind of just like improv line, just like saying anything and seeing how the mouth works and the eyebrow. The glasses really helped me too, you know, just kind of getting into, you know, with the glasses and the, you know, facial expressions. Yeah, I like to look at his dancing moves, you know, try to see how he dances and how his hands kind of, you know, do that. If I get into a straight stance and maybe play with my hands and then think of a line from the movie that, that I've like gone over and over again. Number two. I make the decisions around here, okay? I demand a little respect. I think they might shave my head and uh, put a head cast. The last time we're gonna see Josh with his hair. Ah, I know. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Now you're gonna find out what it's like to be a professional doctor. I used to be young doctor. Yeah. Now I'm. <laughs> in pretty good shape, like a very optimistic middle-aged doctor. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> I never noticed how much my ears stick out. Doug, Doug, stop. I feel bad he has to cut off his hair, but he looks nice. Thank you. Look at this hair. That's my real chest hair right there, that's real. What I'd like to do is have him turn away from me, have the robe uh, closed, and then turn around, and as he stretches, it comes open as it would on the day. And there you have it. Here. Can I take my time in here? Oh, do yeah, you need oh, me to rush back? No, you so you can, can put it away. Yeah. Okay, so I can play. Go to one. And then, uh, show it again. Set, set. And background. Definitely the best film experience I've 
ever had. This is like the most fun I've ever had on the film. Do me a favor and turn back after you've done him. Turn back and pat him on the back, like you know, it's sort of like. <coughs> It's, like it's just been a great experience, you know, working with uh, Mike Myers and Jay Roach, who are the most hilarious people, and Jay is, like, he's amazing, you know? He's not hesitant to go and tell you what he wants. He's not hesitant to go and tell you what he thought was great. He likes to hear everybody's ideas. I think that his philosophy, if I've heard it correctly, is that anybody can have a good idea. Cut!